Welcome to Visuals Kingdom, I'm your host Nick Metzger and today I'm gonna show you how you can remove anything from your pictures. Alright, let's jump right into Photoshop. So the first thing you want to do if you imported your image, you want to duplicate the layer. Always do that. Next, you want to create a new layer because you want to work non-destructive. You always want to be flexible and want to be able to change um, stuff from layer to layer and don't have to, to redo the whole picture. So press Command Shift N to create a new layer and name it, let's say, um, person left. Since in this shot I have a very cool subject, um, very aesthetic, but I have a lot of distracting people in the background and I want to replace them with nothing. <laughs> so actually I want to remove them from the image. So the first layer will be for the first person here on the left. Now what you need to do um, is select the clone stamp tool here on the very left and then go up to sample and instead of current layer which yours will be on select current and below or all layers actually for this um, tutorial it doesn't matter I simply select current and below now the basic of the clone stamp is very very simple if you hold alt and click wherever you like in your image you can then drag and draw that part you selected. So basically if you say I click here, I will draw that part. If I click um, on the red jacket behind here, I will draw that red jacket. So it's a pretty simple concept. I'm gonna um, control C that and start by masking out this person on the very left. I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna search for similar objects and actually that would be the floor here so I'm gonna select the, the floor and simply draw over this person it doesn't have to be perfect yet just make sure that um, there's no person anymore okay so one thing you always want to do is search for repetitive patterns and structures so if you take a closer look at the pillar here, um, imagine it going down until it hits the floor. So what we can do here is make the brush um, a bit bigger, then select this pillar with by holding Alt and left clicking. And then you can simply draw that pillar until it hits the floor pretty easy actually but don't go too far because now imagine that here the, the floor will start crossing it so you want to go back to the floor and and go on with your drawing here now you can see that over here we have another repetitive pattern which is um, this uh, this shadow where the light touches the shadow what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the brush a bit smaller, select the area where the change happens between light and shadow. Maybe I make the brush even a bit bigger. And then you draw on that to the left. Until it hits the pillar. And then go on with the, with the very last details. And now you can see, already see another pattern, which is which are these three pillars here. So what you can do is basically, actually let's try that. Let's just take this pillar here and then try to um, move it one pillar to the right, like so, because that will help us um, get rid of the jacket. Also, the next step is um, select the part where the pillar touches the floor and go over to the third pillar 
and then simply draw to the right. As easy as that. But now <laughs> you don't want to take this part and drag it all up here. You rather want to take the upper part and draw it down. That will help you to keep the to keep the natural flow of the image and make it look um, really really natural. Now you can see that the transition over here. Um, let me just pick the normal mouse. The transition, uh, the normal cursor. The transition over here um, doesn't look too real. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this part and place it on top of this one. Already, uh, pfft, already. Again, I'm going to take the clone stamp tool, select this part, and simply put it over the other one. Maybe I can also also um, draw down a bit so I get the same structure. Like so. That looks pretty good to me, actually. Yeah, that looks great. So, now a problem is, though, that on the bottom here, the floor, the shadows don't match the other shadows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this shadow and then drag it to the right. Maybe it looks a bit weird right now. So I'm gonna take this one in the front here and try what that does. Now that looks a lot better. Now I have the same problem here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. It's actually pretty easy. Just like so. That works great. Alright, so now that's the technique with the clone stamping tool. But you can also use um, what's called the patch tool to mirror a part of the image to another part. But that's a bit too complicated to tell you, so I'm just gonna show you. You can use this tool by um, making a copy of your background, as I did in the beginning. And then go up to the patch tool over here. Then simply draw around the person or the, the object or whatever you don't want in the frame. Now if you drag on that, let's say up the pillar here, you can see that it simply copies the upper part onto the lower part. And that basically gives you a great starting point. What you can do with that now, since it's not perfect obviously, um, you can always use the, um, the eraser tool. Don't make it too big, maybe like that. And then work on the edges. You can see that now the, the person is coming back into the frame, so it would be better if you had like a bit more space around the person. Um, to refine that, you can simply go back into the clone stamping tool Select the pillar and then remove that part, like so. And now something very interesting is happening. For example, let's say I'm gonna create a new layer again. I'm gonna call that the, the people in the background. Now, this part is, is, is very, very interesting because if I now make my brush a bit bigger, the clone stamping tool, and I'm stamping the pillar all the way down to the floor, like so, you get this really, really unrealistic look of dark and light. Um, so actually in this shot it fits pretty well because it's like an, an old arc. But if you don't want that, you can um, basically just select the normal brush tool. Set, set your mode from normal to uh, soft light. And then use black and white to make um, the spots darker or brighter. So if you, you basically want to set the opacity to maybe around, let's say, 
50% and the flow to maybe 70. Then make the brush a bit bigger. So for example, at the moment there's like a dark spot over here. You can see it better when I zoom out, this dark spot. And I'm gonna remove that by selecting white. And then just maybe the opacity is still too strong. I'm gonna reduce that to maybe 25. But then just take white and draw over this part. That's how you will lose um, the, the dark parts you don't want. And vice versa, if you use black, you can darken the, the brighter parts, like so. Just use that tool however you like. It makes a whole, it makes a big difference even though it doesn't make a big difference. So it's like really useful. Um, but now I'm gonna go and put on a little time lapse for you guys just because I want to remove all these people perfectly. All right, so now that I remove these people here in the background, you can see the same pattern again. Um, you can see a darker spot, then a lighter spot, the darker spot, the lighter spot, the darker spot. Now, there is actually another trick which you can use with the darken and brighten technique. So when you select your brush tool here, um, you can lock the opacity. That means if you select the layer you want to, to make the brightness and darkness changes to, simply go up to the chessboard um, up here and click it. What this will do is it will only allow you to um, affect the area which is um, defined by this layer. So what, I'm wanna, what I want to say is, imagine I want to um, draw something with red. Now see what happens. When I draw around the picture, you can see that it only affects the area which I use the clone stamp for. And that's pretty helpful because you don't want to um, make the lighting changes to the other areas. So what I'm going to do, since there is like a um, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright structure. I want to darken, uh, I want to brighten the dark parts. So now since I locked the opacity, I'm just going to select the, the normal brush with the white color and then draw over the darker parts. It's as easy as it looks. Just like so. Now you can see that I can't change this part here because it wasn't affected by the clone stamp before. That means it's in the original background, or should be at least. And you can see that's the case. It's from the original image, so I'm gonna leave that there. Okay, so right now I'm gonna use the clone stamp technique and the patch technique to remove the other people from the shot. Little time lapse. All right, so now I'm in a bit of a tricky part since uh, one person right here in the background is touching Louis' leg. So, this guy is Louis, by the way. So, um, what I want to do is just make the brush really, really small. And then I need to work on the details. So let's say I'm just gonna um, just gonna draw along the pants. But let's say you don't have that possibility because this is still a clean line. Or let's say uh, you don't know how Command C works and while you're drawing, whoops, that happens. So what you're gonna do? You could either clone stamp the pants back on here or you simply go down here and create a layer mask. Now if you use the normal brush tool 
and set the mode back to normal. The opacity back to 100 and the flow to around, let's say 90, that's fine. You can then select white to add something to that layer or black to subtract it. So if I select black, make the brush a bit smaller, I can then draw over the pants again to, re, um, to replace them. Now it's still the original image, I just made up for my mistake before. So I'm gonna continue with some detailed clone stamping. Okay, so now let's say um, I wanna, I don't actually wanna do that, but I want to show you the technique. Um, let's say I wanna remove that whole entire arm. So I'm gonna do create a new layer and then call that um, arm. Now the pattern that you would normally see here is the, the arc. And we can actually use that to remove the arm. So if I select the arc over here, I can then place it over the arm, even though the angle doesn't match the angle of the arc. That doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect yet. Just like so. Now what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna press Command T and I can then transform this layer. Now if I press, uh, if I right click it and go to warp, I get that grid like thing, which I can then adjust until it fits to the angle of the arc. It's actually pretty simple. And it works great. So that will be Let's say something like that. So what I would do next is, of course, um, clone stamp that part out and then clone stamp the upper part of the arm out. And then you basically get to see the whole entire arc over here. All right, so basically we simply use the clone stamp tool and one time the uh, patch tool to get from this to this and we removed all the people out of the shot. All right, so that's it for today's tutorial. That's the technique we use to remove basically anything from our pictures, anything that we don't want, of course. Um, of course, if you have little details, it will take a lot longer, but it will always work. So go to work, you can download our picture in the link below in the description. And thank you so much for watching the entire video. I appreciate it. I hope you learned something. Now the only thing left to do is subscribe to our channel to help us help more people. And also you can watch the next video down here if you want. So have fun and see you next week.